I uh, studied at the uh, Oak Knoll Naval Hospital Library. And I found out by the simple expedient of taking off one collar ornament, I became an MD, you see. Very simple. And uh, they don't let anybody in a medical library except doctors, you see, of the MD class. But by stepping up to the desk with only one collar ornament, you see, on the left side, and for a couple of bucks having a Marine on crutches come by and say, uh, Good morning, doctor. <laughs> I was able to get in a year's study <laughs> at the medical library. I studied the endocrine system and studied this and studied that and dreamed up a few experiments of one kind or another. I wrecked a whole research project, by the way. There was a doctor with the improbable name of Yankee Wits. <laughs> and Yankee Wits was conducting a series of studies on prisoners of war who were being released by that time from German camps and uh, from Japanese camps that had been overrun. And uh, this Yankee Wits uh, was trying to fix them up with testosterone and other endocrine compounds. Well, I had all of his records available to me because he and I were, we played dominoes and things together, evenings. And uh, all of his records were available, and he was keeping very, very sharp metabolism tests and other things to show the results of endocrine fluids and uh, extracts on prisoners, you see. Well, it's very simple. All I had to do was get the name of one of his series take him out in the park, sit down, and do some psychoanalysis and the beginnings of Dianetics and Scientology on him, pull the second dynamic apart and put it back together again, see? and then have him go in and take his metabolism test. <laughs> Yankiewicz said to me one day, he says, good heavens, he said, something has gone wrong with these records. He said, the cases just aren't turning out right. Some of these fellows are getting well. <laughs> well, I found out by those experiences that function monitors structure, that thought monitors matter, and that matter does not monitor thought. Because those people who were given injections and treatment in the absence of psychotherapy, didn't recover. They went the same level. It was interesting condemnation of the therapy. But those people that I had caught behind a tree or on a park bench and had slipped a few yards of Freud to, and a little bit of the beginnings of Dianetics and Scientology, would all of a sudden go upscale, you see. In other words, by treating thought and thinkingness, I found out that I could monitor the experiences and the condition of the person, but I found out similarly that the drugs did not. And that is a very significant series of experiments, which are unfortunately not totally available to us, but are probably still on file in a folder with a great big question mark on it in the Navy Department in Washington, D.C because it was a failed project as far as Yankee Woods was concerned. <laughs> now, if this was the first, the first broad test of it all, thought was boss. Thought was king. Thought could change structure, but matter could not really change matter. But thought could change matter. And that's fascinating. You could vary somebody's weight by changing his thinkingness. If you could do that, then, what did we study? Did we study more structure? Make man well? Change his behavior pattern? Follow it through? Did we go on studying the brain? No. No, never. Never. It would only be thought.